Hi, it's the MLM for the Soul Channel. I do have a new topic for today. Before I begin, I just would like to say, may the words and expressions of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of my heart find favor and acceptance before you, Hashem. This is continuing the Mesilas Yesharim, which is called the Way of the Upright of the Path of the Just from the Ramachal, or Moshe Chaim Utsato. This is the Yafa edition from Art School, and this is what the Sefer looks like if you've never seen it. And I will have a link to Art School so you can check out all that they offer. So this is still the continuation of chapter 11. Bezat Hashem, there's, uh, let's see, I think three more parts as far as this section that I started on um, called Nikias in Character Traits. Last time I did a, long, a lengthier video on haughtiness, so hopefully you got to uh, check that one out. Now this one is talking about Nikias from Anger, and this is going to be a little bit shorter. And then after that, I believe there's two more parts for this chapter, Bezat Hashem, to complete it uh, after a long haul. I don't know how long it's been for chapter 11, but it's quite long. So um, now he says, we will now discuss anger. So co commentary here says, the discussion of anger logically follows that of haughtiness, since an angry nature usually has its roots in haughtiness. A person reacts harshly when things are not done to his liking because he feels slighted by what he perceives as disobedience or insufficient consideration of his wishes. Uh, Matnas, that's from Matnas Chelko, Sifsei Chachamim Midos 1, page 213. Okay, continuing on. The Ramachal will describe four levels of ill-tempered people before explaining what it means to be a Naki from anger. The first level. There is the kind of bad-tempered person about whom the sages said, from the Zohar Bereshus 27b, Anyone who becomes angry is considered as if he committed idolatry. This is a very famous uh, saying. This refers to one who gets angry about anything that is done contrary to his will and becomes so filled with rage that his heart is no longer with him and his reasoning becomes foolish. Now, such a person would be liable to destroy an entire world if he had the power, for intellect exerts no control at all over him, and he is utterly irrational, like all mauling animals. Regarding him, it is said in scripture, Eob 18.4, You who tears himself apart in his anger, shall the earth be abandoned for your sake? Okay, and the commentary here says, Rav Chaim Friedlander notes that the Zohar in Tetzava 182a relates the word toref in this verse to trefa, a person or animal that has suffered a mortal in injury. And it, is, and, in, and, it, and it interprets the word nafsho literally as his soul. Thus, the phrase toref nafsho ba'apo is understood to mean you who renders his soul torefa in his anger. Citing the Arizal, Rav Friedlander explains that a person who loses himself to anger inflicts a, quote, mortal wound on his soul, in effect, quote, killing its holiness, after which he must exert great effort to revitalize himself and regain his original level. That's Sifse Chachanen, Midos 1, page 227 and 238. Okay, so he continues on. Certainly such a person will readily transgress all existing sorts of sin, including idolatry, if his anger should bring him to them, for he possesses no motivator other than his anger, and he will go wherever it brings him. So you see what can happen. You kind of lose yourself. I'm saying this. When you get angry, so you don't even, you don't have control, so anything is possible. And the commentary here says, This most severe type of anger is distinguished both in its frequency and its intensity. Such a person becomes an angry at everything that is done contrary to his will, and his anger is so intense that his intellect cannot control him. According to Ramchal, it is this type that our sages meant when they equated an angry person with an idol worshiper. See above note 103. I'm not going there, but that's what it says. And the additional commentary says, While only the most severe type of short-tempered person becomes completely irrational, every form of anger affects a person's reasoning to some degree. Rav Avram ben Harambam Notes um, from Ha Mafsik Le Ovde Hashem, chapter 6, that our sages compare the effects of anger on a person's behavior to that of alcohol. See Brachos 29a. Avoiding drunkenness and avoiding anger are both effective and important ways of avoiding sin. Indeed, the fact that often a person immediately regrets what he did while he was angry is the greatest proof that many actions done of, out of anger are irrational. Again, see Sifse Chachamim. Okay, so he continues on now with this a second less severe level of anger. There is another kind of person with an angry disposition who is far removed conceptually from this first kind. This is one whose temper does not blaze over every single thing that happens to him contrary to his will, whether trifling or significant. But on the occasions when he does become enraged, he seethes, he seethes 
he seethes, seethes, S-E-E-T-H-E-S, seethes and is infuriated with great fury. This is the person whom the sages of blessed memory labeled as. Difficult to make angry, but difficult to be. That's from Avos. You may have heard this expression, kashel lichos v'kashel lirtsot. That's from Avos 511. This temperament is also unquestionably bad. Commentary here says, as the Mishnah states about such a person, his reward is in being difficult to make angry is superseded by his loss in being difficult to appease. So, so what kind of one cancels out the other? I'm just adding that. For this person may indeed commit a great blunder during the time of his anger. And afterwards, when he has calmed down, he will not be able to repair the damage that he did while angry. So you see that rage or that anger that here in this case, he's not saying it's rage, it's still enraged anger. You know, so when you finally, you know, kind of come back to your senses, it's already too late to repair what, what the harm you've already done. Now, a third and lesser level level of anger. There's another kind of person with an angry disposition who is even less severe than this one. He does not become angry easily, and even when he becomes angry, his anger is a relatively, is a relatively mild anger, so that he does not deviate from rational behavior, but he retains his anger for some time. Now, this kind of person is further from loss than the first ones we've mentioned, but nevertheless, he certainly has not reached the level of being a Naki, for he, was, he is not even a Zahir yet, because as long as anger is able to leave its mark on him, he has not left the category of, quote, one who is disposed uh, to anger. Commentary here says, the mere practice of Zahiris, which is chapter 6 through 9, demands that one control his inclination towards anger. So if a person is unable to erase anger from his heart and may act upon it sometime after the incident that aroused it, he is lacking in Zahiris, and has quite a distance to go toward Nikias. Ramchal explained at the beginning of chapter 10 that a Zahir is careful to avoid things that are clearly sinful. Though he has not yet uprooted his essential desire for such things, while a Naki, which is the subject of this chapter, purifies himself of even a tendency towards sin. Here the Ramchal means that harboring anger or resentment is a clear, is a clear sign. And also it says, see Kohelis 11.10 and above note 79. So what he's saying, just to expand on this comment, a commentary, so um, he's saying that um, someone who is, uh, has the heroes is careful to avoid things that are, are clearly sinful. But a Naki is actually a step higher. He purifies himself from even the tendency towards this. So that's the difference between the, two, between the two. Okay, so now he continues on. Now the fourth and less severe level of anger. There is an additional kind of person whose disposition is to anger is even less severe than the last. This is one whom it is difficult to anger, and even when he does become angry, his anger is not of the type that can lead to damage or destruction. Rather, it is a brief anger. And how long does this anger last? A moment and no longer. That is, it lasts only from the time that the anger is naturally aroused within him on account of some incident, until the time that the intellect is also aroused to combat it. This is what the sages of blessed memory d- described as. Uh, this is also from um, Perkeavos. It's kashel lechos v'noach l'rtsot. Difficult to anger and easily appease. So the commentary here says this kind of person can become irritated, but his anger is so mild and his intellect so well trained and developed that the anger is but momentary and any ill feeling is immediately banished. The Ramchal's description of the previous person as one who is not even a Zahir implies that the one described here has attained Zahiris from anger. Nevertheless, even he has not achieved Nikias, as Ramchal will explain. Okay, so he continues on. Um, now, this temperament is surely a good lot from those who possess, for those who possess it, for the nature of a person is instinctively aroused to anger, and if he overcomes it, to the point that even while angry he does not become incensed, and moreover he overcomes it, so that even that mild anger does not last in him for a long time, but rather dissipates and goes away quickly, he is surely deserving of praise. Indeed, the sages of blessed memory said concerning such a person, in in 89a, what does the verse... Um, what does the verse in Eo 26, 7, he suspends the earth upon blima, literally nothingness, teach us? It teaches that the world exists only on account of one who muzzles, uh, in, in Hebrew that's bolem, his mouth at a time of provocation. This means that the person's nature has already become, been aroused with anger, but he, is, but he, in his successful effort to overcome it, quote, muzzles his mouth and does not respond to his adversary. The commentary here says, the exposition of blima as muzzling is related to the plain meaning of the word nothingness. As was explained in note 114, anger often stems from haughtiness, so the ability to remain silent is the, in the face of provocation stems from a feeling of humility or nothingness. See Hulin 89a. Okay, so he continues on. Such a person is not only praiseworthy, but also upholds the world. Nevertheless, since he does not become aroused to anger, albeit in the mildest way he... 
I'm sorry, since he does become aroused to anger, albeit in the mildest way, he has fallen short in the Kia. So still, he doesn't obtain the Kia's, even though this is like of the lesser level. Now, the Kia's from anger. However, the character of Hillel the Elder surpasses all of these that we have discussed. For he actually did not take offense at anything at all, including the strongest provocation. And even an arousal to anger did not occur in him. It says, see Shabbos 30b through 31a. This is surely a paradigm of one who is absolutely not key of the trait of anger. And the commentary here says, It should be noted that the Gemara describes Hillel's comportment as, quote, humble. And in chapter 22, Ramchal, in fact, cites Hillel as a paradigm of humility. This goes hand in hand with Ramchal's words here. For since anger is a manifestation of haughtiness, Hillel's utter calm in the face of provocation, in other words, his Nikias from anger was a manifestation of his extreme humility. So here, he, there's additional commentary that tells this story. It's a little bit lengthy, but it's really good. I know this story. I've heard it before from other uh, rabbis. So the Gemara relates three incidents in which Hillel paid no attention to extreme disrespect shown to him by others, and instead dealt with each person in a gentle and understanding manner. In one of the incidents, a person made a bet of 400 zoos, zoos with his fellow that he could provoke Hillel to anger. And in that time, 400 zoos could be, you know, 4,000, 40,000. I don't know. It's, you know, them, I guess them was a lot of money. I'm saying that because I've heard that. So he passed by Hillel's doorway on Friday when Hillel was washing his hair in honor of, Sh- of Sh- Shabbos and called derisively, is there a Hillel here? Is there a Hillel here? So meaning, I'm saying this because I heard this from, I think it was from Rabbi Ruvain. He's saying like as if Hillel wasn't there, he's making it like as if, you know, can anybody know where he is? And this repeats a few times, just to give you the hint. So Hillel wrapped himself in his cloak and went out to greet him, him saying, my son, what do you seek? The person said, I have a question to ask. To which Hillel responded, ask my son, ask. He asked, why is it that the heads of Babylonians are oblong? Hillel was a Babylonian. So again, Rabbi Ruvain said, you know, he's asking like the most crazy questions that, you know, someone should get angry about, right? But you'll see what happens. So Hillel replied, my son, you have asked a profound question. It is because they do not have skillful midwives. So the heads became misshapen at birth. The person went away, waited a while, and then returned again, rudely interrupted Hillel, only to ask another ridiculous question. Hillel responded respectfully as before. The man left, waited another while, and then returned and initiated the process yet again. But this time, too, Hillel responded with the same degree of respect. Finally, the, per- finally, the person said, I have a great many questions to ask, but I am fearful that you may become angry with me. Hillel wrapped himself in his cloak, sat down before him, and said, Feel free to ask any question that you have. The person said, are you the Hillel whom they call the Nasi of the Jewish people? Hillel replied that he was, and the person said, May there not be more like you among the Jewish people. Hillel calmly asked, My son, why? The man replied, Because on account of you, I have lost 400 zoos. Hillel said, Hillel is worth your losing on his account yet another 400 zoos, as long as Hillel will not take offense. So there is a great story. Um, okay, so continuing on. This is the end of this uh, section, just about. So the proper way to express necessary displeasure. Even for the purpose of a mitzvah, the sages of blessed memory warned us not to become angry. See Shabbos 34a, 105b, and then Rambam, Hilchos Deos, T3. Uh, meaning that even a teacher should not get angry at his student, nor a father at his son. Now this does not mean that he should not admonish him. To the contrary, he should surely admonish him, but without anger, rather purely to guide them on the straight path. And the anger that he displays to them should be anger of the face, i.e. external, feigned anger, not genuine anger of the heart. Um, and then the importance of avoiding anger. Shlomo Amel said in Kohelis 7.9, Do not be hastily upset, for anger lingers in the bosom of fools. Scripture also writes in Eo 5.2, For anger kills the fool. Uh, and commentary here says, From the first verse we see that anger is the province of the foolish. And from the second verse we see that it can have disastrous consequences. And the sages of blessed memory said in Eruvin 65b, the essence of a person can be discerned through three things. This is also a very famous uh, pasuk, and I'll say it in Hebrew. So it's, B'shlosha dvarim ha'adam nikar, b'choso, b'chiso, u'b'cha'aso. Through his cup of wine, through his purse, and through his angry level. So you might have heard that. It's, it's pretty famous. I've heard it many times. So the commentary here says, how does the person act when he drinks wine? How honest is he in his transaction? And how easily does he become angry? This Rashi. Anger strips away many of the inhibitions that normally restrain a person. Thus, when one is angry, everyone can see his real essence, just as they can see it when he is drunk. Similarly, similarly severe financial pressure can cause a person to act without his usual restraint. 
allowing his inner essence to be revealed. That's from Rabbi Yerucham Lubavitz in Das Torah, the Midbar, page 36, Rabbi Eliyahu Dessler in Mechtav, Eliyahu, volume 5, page 93. So that is the end of this section on um, Nikias from Anger. It was short, but I think it made some good points, so I hope you will um, get those. And I hope and pray that we will all merit to live and see the coming of Mashiach speedily in our days and the rebuilding of our final and everlasting Beit HaMegdash. Amen, and thanks for watching.